Good afternoon, folks. You're listening to WCNT Country Radio here in Warrior, Kentucky. On the phone with me, or <clears throat> more accurately, on the CB radio with me, is the one and only Dale Mabry. Dale, now. Oh, yeah, I can hear you, Dale, loud and clear. Keep that microphone close now. All right. All right. Now, now, Dale, I know you've had a quite a week, man. And uh, tell me, uh, all of your listeners, all of our listeners, have been uh, concerned about you. I know you've been to jail before, but this time it was serious. Um, I don't want to steal your thunder, so why, why don't you just tell me the story about what happened? <laughs> it's quite a story. It's, a, it's quite a story. So, so I was uh, I had a show I was going to play out in uh, in Brownsville, Texas, out MC out there, and uh, I thought, well, I might as well leave a few days early, going up to Kentucky, visit some old friends, and you know, have myself uh, take care of some business I had to take care of up there. So. It was like it was it was meant to be. I mean, I I stop my motorcycle at a red light and I look over to the left and I see a bunch of damn I don't, I don't even know what to call them. There was uh there was men dressed up like women. There was women with their hair dyed pink sticking oh, up no. in the air with bones through their nose or whatever oh, no, they had going no, on. No. And, uh, you know, mo- most of the time, I just, I don't pay people like that no mind. They ain't causing me no trouble. I ain't going to cause them no trouble. But I look out in front of me, and right out in front of them, there's a guy with with an American flag, and he take out a Zippo lighter. No. Keep, I'm, I'm parked right there at, at the red light. And I look over, and I see him take that Zippo lighter to that that American flag, and I don't even know how to explain the feeling. Like, well, keep, I, keep, I keep it, if hey, you ever keep it Christian, it, keep it Christian. I, I, We're on I'm, air I'm, now. I'm, I'm gonna keep it Christian, but uh, I felt, you know, like like when I was in the war, like when I was in the Gulf War, and you see the enemy coming, and you're you just your body. Oh, we you know, lost. Enemy, we lost you, know, you there, feeling, Dale. And, we lost you for a second. Could you could you say that again? This is a great story. Oh yeah, can can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yeah, you must Sorry, have gone I, under I a bridge was, or something. I was just talking about how uh, you know when you when you're at war and you you see the enemy and you you know what you got to do and to be to, to be honest with you, I don't even really remember deciding to jump on off the hog and take care of business. I just next thing I knew, I was doing it. You know, I was right there in front of him. And I just started beating him like a rented mule, like he owed me money, you know. And you you can bet all them liberals talking about how they going to fight for this and fight for that. It was none of them fighting to protect their buddy. <laughs> they just, they scattered. When I was done beating on him, I, he, he seemed like he went unconscious. And, uh, you know, I figured... I ain't gonna beat on an unconscious man. I gotta draw the line somewhere. But I did stand up and I looked at all them liberals and I said, "Any of you who got a problem with what I just did, you come on right up here and tell me to my face." <laughs> you bet they all ran. So anyway, I just uh, stood there waiting for the police to come. I figured based on what I did this man, the uh, police was probably gonna come, and they sure did. <laughs> That's the part that uh, there's the part that everybody already knows is the part about after the police came. Well, well, so how did the police treat you? Was there any uh, uh, of that uh, so-called police brutality that the liberals <laughs> are always crying about? No, nah, you know what? If you're going to get arrested, uh, being a guy with a reputation for standing up for law enforcement is the thing to be. They they knew right who I was, and I told them, yeah, I know what I've done, and I know what you got to do. So I, I did what everybody ought to do. I cooperated with the commands that they gave me. I complied. I, I let them put them handcuffs on. I told them, you don't need to do it, but if you got to do it, I understand. I ain't going to hurt nobody, but mm-hmm. they felt like they had to do it. So mm-hmm. they, they put the handcuffs on me and took my bike, which I got to have somebody go and get back but that's another uh my lawyers are going to work on that but uh, anyway no they they treated me very very well and uh you know they they knew who i was and they knew how i felt about them they knew i wasn't going to give them no trouble it's uh they're just people doing their job you know they're the the blue line between uh between destruction and violence and law and order and last thing i was ever going to do was give one of them trouble and they knew that so no they treated me re- really really well 
Oh, that's good. You know, uh, if you're just tuning in, listeners, you're listening to uh, WCNT Country Radio here in Warrior, Kentucky. We have the famous Dale Mabry on, and he's uh, <laughs> giving us his per- first hand. It's the first time. And Dale, you don't give interviews very often. It's the first time he's given an interview by his experiences uh, fighting for real American people, real American cause. Um, so, Dale, tell us some more. What what was your experience like in there? And, Dale, how long were you in there for? Well, I, it was, I was in there a total of six nights. And, uh, you know, it was uh, – I'd been to jail before. It ain't no big thing. But, uh, you know, they, they knew who I was. And for some reason they felt like they needed to house me separately, at least at first, because they said, you know, it ain't a good thing to be a, a celebrity in jail. And oh, you I don't said, say. Well, I, I, I told him, I don't mean to hurt nobody's feelings, but this ain't the first time I ever been in jail. I got this covered, but they, they still felt like they ought to uh, keep me separate. But, you know, if if you're going to be in jail in Kentucky, you know, being a country music singer is kind of uh, kind of what you want to be. Because, you know, some of the guards, they know how much I love law enforcement. And I even, I don't want to get nobody in trouble, but I even signed a couple of autographs and, and uh they had me in that cell all by myself, so I, I said, listen, ain't nobody for me to strangle with no guitar string in here but me, and I expect to live, so you mind if I have my guitar? So they, you know, they said, don't uh, don't tell nobody who gave it to you, but they did let me use my guitar for a while, and oh, I got to wonderful. finish working on, uh, you know, there was a, a, a jingle I've been wanting to write for a, a, a buddy of mine, I'm on a, I finally finished writing it while I was in there, I got some work done at yeah. least, and uh going to uh going to record that one pretty soon but uh no it wasn't so bad in there at all and after a few days you know the the other the other inmates got the you got this is jail not prison so everybody in jail kind of still has a little bit of hope they still think they're going to get bailed out they still feel like maybe they're not going to get uh convicted and a lot of folks are in there for things that you almost understand like driving on a suspended license because they got to get to work you know and there then they get caught and there they are in jail so they ain't all bad folks in there and a lot of them was fans so when they when they got word that uh dale mabry was in there with them and didn't have anything else to do folks started asking if i could maybe do like a johnny cash kind of a Folsom prison sort of concert for them and i didn't have a band with me or nothing but i still had the guitar so they let me uh kind of set up there on top of one of the tables in the cafeteria one evening and do a little uh do a little impromptu concert i figured them folks have paid to see me out there in brownsville missed out i might as well give the concert to them i'm gonna head back to brownsville and get to people what uh what they paid for because it wasn't my fault i wasn't able to get there but no anyway jail wasn't so bad i, I it was uh you know everybody treated me really well treated the other inmates really well figured i ought to repay them for their hospitality do a little concert since i wasn't doing nothing else and that was quite a concert let me tell you that well that was real american of you dale now i gotta tell you this is the best part of this story uh this is the best part because i just love this i mean one thing everybody loves about president trump is that the loyalty we show to him he returns to us and if anybody just proved that you proved the hell out of it man i mean yeah, tell us who made uh who'd you make your phone call to did the president just call you up like how did it all work <laughs> i mean this is amazing well uh you know what folks that have been arrested they know this moment where uh i was wondering for the first time i got arrested where they say you know you get one phone call what if i call and it's a business signal is that it for me or what i'm st- no one ever knows I'm there, but no, they'll they'll let you keep calling until you get somebody, and uh, and you standing there is just you and that phone, and you can call anybody in the world, and who do you call? And, and I'm I, I've been there many times, but this time I'm thinking, oh, I can call my wife, uh, tell her I love her, but she can't get me out of this jail. Uh, I can call my mama, but she can't get me out of this jail. I can call my lawyer, but damn, if anybody is the worst person at getting me out of jail, it's him. <laughs> he sure ain't no good at it. I thought, no, you know who I'm going to call? I'm going to call Donald Trump. 
if there's anybody in the whole country that can get me out of here, it's him. So uh, I called the, uh, they, they helped me look up the number. I just call I called the, uh, the White House switchboard all the time, just leave messages for the president. I, he's a busy guy. I don't expect to return calls very often, but I figured, uh, you know, I know those folks up there at the switchboard. They know who I am. And I called and I explained the situation to him. I said, I know Mr. President's very busy. And, uh, but it doesn't take him too long to sign a piece of paper to get me on out of here. And I told him what I was in for, and they understood why, uh, Mr. President Trump would probably want to let me out for that, because I remember him talking about it before. So I just left a message and I sat back and waited. I didn't even follow up. I had faith. I knew oh, that man. President Trump was going to take care of the folks that take care of him. And, uh, and that's what he done. It wasn't just a few days later. I, I didn't get to talk to him oh. when I when I first called and left the message, but uh, but he called personally just to tell me that he was going to sign the paper to get me out. I was in there with my guitar, and the guards come to the door with a phone, said, "There's somebody on the phone you're going to want to talk to." And there he was. He said, "Dale, I got your message. I'm busy. I don't have time to talk right now, but I want to know. I want you to know that I don't got no problems with what you did to that boy, and I'm on sign to pardon right now." And uh, he he kept his word. I, I was out. I was out there, uh, you know, getting a ride from a friend of mine, and about two hours later. Wow. So. Do you actually have an actual pardon, not just for your past, but for future ass whoopings? I that's mean, what the that's what the lawyers told me. That's I, amazing. I, when I talked to President Trump, he didn't say anything about that. But then, uh, then when they saw the actual wording on the on the pardon, it says past and future uh, actions, and so they told me that means as long as I'm. It's, it says only for, for for defiling an American flag or, or not standing up for the anthem. They said, as long as it's for one of them two things, I can whoop the ass of anybody that I want, and this pardon presumptively pardons me. So I'm kind of like a all-American ass-whooping superhero. I'm the only only American that I know of that has a piece of paper from the... It's kind of like 007 had that license to kill... But they told me I can't kill nobody because the, the wording of the pardon didn't cover that. But they said that uh, I got a license to whoop ass from the president of the United States himself, long as I'm only whooping ass for one of them two reasons. And these days, those are the only two reasons I ever feel. I tell you what, though, I, you know, ass that I'm going to whoop that I wasn't going to whoop anyway, I just sure am glad I don't got to spend no more time in jail for it because I sure do get tired of jail. Well, well, don't we all? Well, well, Dale, I I know you got a long trip ahead of you, but that that sounds like one hell of a weekend you had there. Part, it was one part. hell of a weekend, all right. Yeah, and, and I think I speak for all of our listeners here on uh, WCNT uh, uh, Radio when I say that we are sure glad you're out of jail and heading back to Florida to see your family. Uh, goodbye. God, God bless you, Dale. God bless you. Well, I thank you. Ain't nobody happier about that than me. They closed the welfare office Monday and it grew an angry mob. A bunch of liberal babies crying cause they gotta get a job. Well, I've been working since my paper out and now I drive a truck. So don't come to me for sympathy.